time. All right, so today's lesson is going to be on how do we use congruent triangles to prove line segments or angles congruent. As I've mentioned in class, we've learned how to prove triangles congruent. As we see, triangle ABF is congruent to triangle CDE, and the reason for this would be by SAS, side angle side. We could also state the fact that other angles or sides that are not mentioned here are also congruent because they are corresponding angles or corresponding sides of congruent triangles. We call that corresponding parts. For example, angle A would be congruent to angle C. AF would be congruent to CE. And angle E would be congruent to angle F because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So let's take a look at what we're doing today. To prove two segments or angles are congruent, first thing we do is to choose two triangles that contain the segments or angles that are to be proved congruent. The second thing is you actually do that, prove them. The third thing, show that the segments or angles that are to be proven congruent are congruent by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We could abbreviate that with CPCTC. All right, so essentially, you're doing what you've learned already and you've been doing for the past month of proving triangles congruent, and we're just going to extend that to prove that parts of the triangle are congruent by the fact that the triangles are congruent and they are corresponding parts. So let's take a look at an example of what I mean by this. So here we go. We have two givens. BD bisects angle ABC and BD is perpendicular to AC. They would like us to prove that AD is congruent to CD. So first off, they want us to prove AD congruent to CD. Let's choose the two triangles that contain these parts. So here's one triangle, here's the other triangle. So let's prove those two triangles congruent to each other using the givens that we have. <clears throat> the first given, BD bisects angle ABC. The reason would be given. Of course we see a key word, bisect. That's a nice vocabulary word. And bisect as we know means to good, cut in half. We're cutting an angle in half, angle ABC. Here's angle ABC. So let's mark our diagram of what's happening here. We're cutting ABC into two congruent angles. So we could state angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And this is given to us by the definition of an angle bisector. All right, our third statement. We're done with this given. Move on to the next given. BD is perpendicular to AC. And the reason is given. All right, of course, we see a vocabulary word here, perpendicular. What does perpendicular say? Good. Forms right angles. So we can say that these two angles are right angles because BD is perpendicular to AC. So our conclusion will be angle 1 and angle 2 <coughs> are right angles. And this is given to us by the definition of perpendicular. Whenever we see two angles being right angles, as we've mentioned in class maybe a million times, you must state that those angles are congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And the reason would be that right angles are congruent. Great. So, so far we have an angle congruent to an angle, an angle congruent to an angle. We do not have enough to prove these two triangles congruent yet. So, there are two things that you were taught to look for. Vertical angles or reflexive property. There's no X in this picture. So, there's no vertical angles. Let's look for reflexive property. Do these two triangles share anything? Good. BD. So let's write that as our next statement. BD is congruent to BD by the res reflexive property. All 
Alright, now we have enough to say those two triangles are congruent. So let's state that. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And this is given to us by angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. Alright, so this is what we've been doing so far. We've proved triangles congruent. We've been doing this for the past month. Now we're just going to extend it. And we could say since these two triangles are congruent to each other, that AD must be congruent to DC. So let's write that. AD is congruent to DC. And we could say this because these two sides are corresponding to each other. So they're corresponding parts, corresponding parts of congruent triangles, so they're congruent. C P C T C. We use both givens and we proved what we needed to prove. Therefore we're done with this proof. Right, let's take a look at one more example. Here we go. We're given A, B, and C D bisect each other at E. Prove that angle C is congruent to angle D. So they want us to prove that angle C it's congruent to angle D. So first thing we must do is choose the two triangles that contain these parts. So here's one triangle, here's another triangle. Let's prove these two triangles congruent based on the facts that were given in the givens. So our first given statement, AB and CD bisect each other at E. The reason will be given. Alright, key word here, bisect. The question is, what's being bisected? Are they both being bisected or is it just one? Since it tells us that they're bisecting each other, we're going to have them both being bisected. <clears throat> so let's bisect CD first. So that means to cut in half. So we're going to conclude CE is congruent to ED, and this would be the definition of bisect. So now we bisected CD, let's also bisect AB. So we're going to bisect these two. So we can conclude that AE is congruent to EB. And it's the same exact reason, definition of bisect. Alright, so far we have a side congruent to a side and another side congruent to a side. We don't have enough to say the triangles are congruent. As before I mentioned, the two things we need to look for, either reflexive property or vertical angles. Well, here's an X. So obviously we're going to have, good, vertical angles. So let's state that these angles are congruent. Angle CEA, which is this angle here, is congruent to angle BED, which is this angle here. And our reason, vertical angles are congruent. Now we have an angle. So now we could state that these two triangles are congruent. So triangle. ACE is congruent to triangle. So we have to take a look. You see this A? What's going to correspond to the A? We take a look and it's going to be B. So B, D, E. And this is by side, angle, side, congruent to side, angle, side. All right. So we know how to prove these triangles congruent. You've gotten many proofs like this, so you should know how to do this. If you don't, please come to tutoring. Now let's extend this part to actually prove what they want us to prove. They want us to prove, let's just change the color of the highlighter, angle C is congruent to angle D. So Let's actually write that out now. Since the two triangles are congruent, we can now state angle C is congruent to angle D because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, so they're congruent. 
So let's take a look at this. Corresponding parts, so angle C corresponds to angle D in the triangle. Angle C is in the middle. Angle D is in the middle. They're corresponding parts. They're corresponding parts of congruent triangles. We prove them congruent. Therefore, the two angles are congruent. When you come into class on Monday, you're going to have a worksheet with a bunch of work to work on. And hopefully, you list any questions that you have. You can go back to the video or even do some practice on your own. I would like you to actually answer these two questions for class tomorrow. These are review questions, and these are also review for your test, which is coming up on the 29th. That's Thursday. That's two, a week from Thanksgiving. All right, have a good night, and hopefully you understood everything. Let's see how this worked.